to all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be joining us today. My name is Bitima Nozwani and I am a Provincial Education Officer from the Commission for Gender Equality in South Africa. I am very excited to be co-facilitating the session today, which is the second edition of our African Youth Powering the SDGs webinar series. I'm going to be handing over to Rotimi Oliwale, who I'm co-facilitating with to introduce himself and also introduce the topic of the webinar for today. Rotimi. Thank you, Botumelo. My name is Rotimi Olawale. I am the Executive Director of Youth of Africa based in Abuja, Nigeria. And I'm happy to join uh, today on today's webinar. As you all know, the topic for today's webinar is from the Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development towards the high-level political forum uh, in July 2019. Uh, this will be a youth-led discussion from young people across the African region, specifically those who took part in the Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development in <clears throat> Morocco last month. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, webinar participants sharing with us their experience from the forum, and particularly the outcomes that they think are most important for all of us to know about in terms of SDG implementation, uh, our country and across the region, as well as accountability at local, national, regional, or global levels. Over to you, Ross. Um, furthermore, we would encourage um, those who are watching us live from across the continent and beyond uh, to share their comments, ideas, and feedback. Um, uh, put that on the YouTube live feed. I would collate all the ideas and input generated during this webinar into a format brief uh, that will be shared as a recommendation to the regional commission uh, who coordinated the forum which happened uh, in Morocco. We encourage you to share your thoughts and questions uh, would as much as possible take some of the questions and ask our facilitators to respond to them uh, during the course of today's uh, discussion. Uh, there will also be a chance to ask questions through the YouTube chat box. And I will then the floor now to Rose to do the. Uh, yeah, so now before we dive into the discussion on the experiences of the the young people who participated um, during the forum, we want to invite Emmanuel Ametipe, who is the convener of the African Youth SDG Summit. And most recently, he was announced as one of the UN Development Program's 16 by 16 young leaders. He is going to share with us a brief background to the African Regional Forum on Sustainable Development to explain to us what is, what is it and how does it relate to the high-level political forum as well as formal sustainable development goals follow-up and review processes. Now, I want to congratulate you, Emmanuel, on your appointment, and I want to hand over to you to please um, just do the alignment for us on the regional, the African Regional Forum, as well as the High-Level Political Forum. Over to you, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Rose, and uh, good morning to you all. My name is uh, Emmanuel Amitipi. I'm the Executive Director for Youth Advocate Ghana, and um, also the convener of the African Youth SDG Summit. It is my pleasure to be giving this brief opening statement for the second in series of the webinar. And um, as uh, the Bruce rightly uh, indicated, I'm going to be giving a brief background to the African Regional Forum uh, on Sustainable Development that was held a few months ago and how it relates to the High Level Political Forum and all other processes that will be happening. Now, uh, as you will recall, the fifth session of the African Regional Forum on Sustainable Development convened in Marrakesh, Morocco from the 16th to 18th April 2019 under the theme Empowering People and Ensuring Inclusiveness and Equality. The session carried out an in-depth review of selected sustainable development goals, that's the SDGs, and the corresponding goals of the African Union's Agenda 2063, that's the Africa we want. In particular, the session reviewed SDG 4, which is quality education, SDG 8, uh, decent work and economic growth, SDG 10, reduce inequalities, 
SDG 13, Climate Action, SDG 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions, and SDG 17, which is Partnership for the Goals. Now, the forum brought together over 800 participants from government, intergovernmental organizations, and major groups and other stakeholders. And uh, I'm happy to be uh, saying that you'll be hearing more from a number of young people who participated in that forum during this uh, webinar. Now, in terms of uh, how the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development relates to the Halo Political Forum and the Agenda 2023, I would like to uh, mention that this forum follows up on and, and reviews the implementation of the 2030 Agenda in Africa. It is supposed to link national, regional, and global discuss, uh, discourses on the SDGs, and it is further supposed to serve as a multi-stakeholder platform to promote the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and provide input to the annual sessions on the, of the uh, high-level political forum. The high-level political forum, which many of you are aware, is the up and review of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at the global level. Critically, the high-level political forum provides young people with a unique opportunity each year to hold government accountable for their global commitment to end poverty inequality, climate change, and provides us with a platform to call for strengthening youth engagement in all SDG matters. At the High Level Political Forum, government presents voluntary national reviews, that is the VNRs, which are both written submissions and formal presentations on how they are progressing towards their implementation of the SDGs. VNRs highlight the challenges, successes, and sustainable development priorities for the future. Government are supposed to engage a whole host of different stakeholders in the development of their VNRs, including, of course, young people. However, many governments fail to run quantitative and inclusive processes to gather stakeholder inputs, and so often the perspectives and priorities of young people get left out. Now, in terms of why the African Regional Sustainable Development Forum is an important advocacy platform for young people, I would like to uh, recall that there are 1.8 billion young people in the world today. Half the world is under 30, and nine in 10 of these young people live in developing countries. This is the largest youth population there has ever been. And here in Africa, our continent is home to over 1.2 billion people, over 60% of whom are uh, who fall below the age of 25. Young people are therefore often seen as the future. We know. We are more than the future. We are today. Our generation are already solving the world's greatest challenges, whether it be around climate, conflict, poverty, or human rights for all. The achievement of the SDGs by 2030 will depend on us, young people, playing a clear and formal role in tracking their implementation and ensuring government remain accountable to the commitment they have made. If we don't hold government accountable, then who, who will do that? And this is why it is so important for us to be engaging in platforms like the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development and the High Level Political Forum to ensure our government are reporting accurately and openly on the SDGs uh, achievement, but also the failures and challenges that need to be addressed. Finally, I also would like to provide some brief reflections on some of the outcomes from the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development. In terms of the outcomes and key messages from the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development, you will hear more details during the main discussion during this webinar between young people who attended and which specific outcome really resonated with them and their work. I will say that, disappointingly, youth is referenced only four times in the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development Key Messages Outcome Document, four times in 18 pages. Furthermore, the processes in place to meaningfully engage young people, either in person or remotely, in the African Regional Forum Sustainable Development were hugely lacking. And you will hear more on this during the discussion later. As well as some of our recommendations for how the couple of key outcomes I want to highlight as important for young people, particularly in our region. Many discussions at the forum highlighted challenges and difficulties faced by a number of African countries and reporting on SD indicators and call for the establishment of a solidarity fund for statistical development designed to support African countries in the collection of uh, statistical data. If we don't have the data, how can we measure progress and how can we keep our government accountable? 
I see this as an important step to generating the evidence we need, but will also call for more consideration of citizen-generated data and the important uh, insight this locally collected information of which MAT is generated by young people has in terms of tracking our progress on the goals. Nations were also encouraged to build multi-stakeholder partnerships, plans and programs of action at regional and sub-regional levels to ensure the desired development that leaves no one behind. We have heard this many times before, the idea of multi-stakeholder partnerships. But unless these partnerships are created in an uh, open and transparent way, our government are prepared to work with young people as equals and technical experts in the work that we do. Then we will risk repeating the partnership rhetoric, but failing to shift the power to build meaningful collaborations across borders. I hope that this uh, opening statement will provide very insightful uh, areas for discussion that I hope will inform the, the final outcome of this webinar. I thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Aimano. That was very uh, concise and straight to the point. And thanks for the analysis, especially looking at uh, some of the youth context into uh, the outcome from the uh, Morocco meeting. Now we're going to dive straight into the live discussion with an amazing group of advocates. Uh, some of the youth context into uh, the outcome from the who participated in the Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development last month and by this with an amazing group of advocates. They'll be sharing their reflections on some of the main outcomes in relation to young people in the region, and we would also learn from them what they see as the most implication uh, for the region in terms of youth, as well as the implementation of the SDGs uh, towards the follow-up and review. Uh, I would encourage uh, those who are watching to please type their questions and comments during this discussion, and we'll be able to take a few of them uh, during the course of the discussion. I'm joined by uh, a, a wonderful panel of five, Anne, Damila, Rekosu, Mwinji, and Ebel. And I will throw off, kick off with the first question. In your view, was there one key outcome from the Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development that you believe has the potential to have a real impact for your work on SDG implementation and accountability? And, and the floor is open for uh, who wants to kick off with a question. Maybe we'll start with Anne. Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Amilari Oyedele. I, I was at a conference in, in, in Morocco um, last month uh, where we discussed a lot of issues around the um, uh, 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 Hello. Uh, I, I was at a conference in Morocco last month. I saw the reflection that they resonated with me about the most important and the need for us to have access to data towards the SDGs, looking at the BNRs, to able to track our government implementation process around the SDGs, and also making this data available for the public to have access to. Okay, because the good quality data on special and also are looking at data on on on, on inclusion to education and also uh, basically focusing more on gender and location needs to the to be enhanced enhanced in various so, uh, countries. But it's, it's, it's quite a pity that Nigeria was not there to, to report. However, I was able to learn and understand a lot of things from other countries in the course of the implementation plan uh, and the review process that, that happened there uh, last, last month in March. Thank you. Right. Do we have uh, more responses to the first question? Uh, Council Anne Mewindi, anyone can take it out. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, my brother Rotimi, and your co-facilitator for the floor. Um, um, uh, the I, I was also uh, present at the conference in Marrakesh, and uh, for me, I think one key uh, outcome um, that actually uh, came up uh, was the, um, the needs for uh, coordination at the national level in terms of the SDG implementation. Uh, <clears throat> we all know at Africa, in terms of performance, uh, Africa is not uh, um, uh, on track uh, per se. Uh, so um, um, there is a need for um, strengthening uh, uh, national institutions uh, 
and to coordinate uh, the implementation of the of the SDGs on the ground. So uh, for me, this is uh, key uh, in terms of youth engagement, uh, particularly uh, different youth groups that are acting at the national level to work with their respective governments and development partners to ensure uh, the sustainable development goals are uh, implemented. Uh, because um, what is actually going to happen is if we fail to uh, realize the these important goals by the 2030, so the young people are going to um, um, suffer the consequences most. So uh, I think is there is there is a need for um, young people at the national level to get involved, work with go with their government to ensure the implementation of the SDGs at national level. Uh, I quite agree uh, with uh, Comrade Emmanuel uh, when he said um, young people uh, need to get involved to hold their government accountable. Uh, I would say uh, we don't only uh, holding, we are not only holding our government accountable, but as young people, we are also taking action to ensure the SDGs are implemented. Uh, the bad example is. Uh, the initiative that he, as a young person, is leading in Ghana, in West Africa, the Africa Youth SDG Summit, is one of the bright examples that young people are taking as bold actions to implement the Sustainable Development Goals in Africa. So we are not only holding government accountable, and we are not only making resolutions, but we are taking tangible actions to ensure the implementation of the SDGs on the ground. Uh, for me, one key thing that also came up um, at the at the regional forum was Africa need to have one voice. Uh, we need to, um, in terms of our engagement with the SDGs at the global level, or in terms of our engagement at the discussion, uh, the global level. So we need to have, we need to um, go together as one Africa, have one voice, and also have um, one uh, position. Uh, this uh, this has been something that I. Uh, I personally was a bit frustrated at the Africa Regional Forum uh, when we have different, particularly the civil society, the major group and uh, other stakeholders session, when we have different groups trying to push for their different agendas. So, so for me, that was I, I, not I, right. I'd like to interrupt you a bit, Kasu. I'd like you to yield the floor for the other uh, persons to speak on the panel. OK, thank you so much for interrupting me. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, this is Mwinji from the Commonwealth Youth Human Rights and Democracy Network. For me, one key outcome that resonated with me from, from the forum was the highlighting of the fact that many African countries are facing difficulties in terms of reporting on SDG indicators and the call for the establishment of a solidarity fund for statistical development designed to support African countries in the collection of the necessary statistical data. Um, as indicated by my colleague Emmanuel, this data is essential in ensuring that we assess the progress that has, that has been made so far in terms of um, SDG implementation. And so for me, this is one of the key outcomes that I got from, from the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mwinji. Uh, and over to you. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Anne Sizomo, uh, technical advisor from uh, IPPF and uh, regional coordinator for uh, right here, right now. Uh, strategic partnership in Africa. I think um, uh, looking back in uh, uh, some of the things that uh, are key and also a uh, game changer under SDG4, um, we have uh, there's a key mention around uh, an emphasis around the uh, completion of uh, education and also the inequalities that exist within, uh, especially you know girls and issues that uh, affect girls in terms of uh, the completion of uh, education. And I think for Africa, this uh, is very key in terms of being highlighted because we know in most of the countries, there's a lot of emphasis on, um, on starting, um, 
you know, in terms of enrollment of uh, education, but there are a lot of uh, factors that are actually affecting completion and simple things like, you know, um, you know, access to uh, to sanitary pads, issues of uh, early pregnancy. I think in every country there's a lot of school dropout due to, you know, uh, teenage pregnancy. So that being mentioned, though, I would have preferred definitely uh, it coming out stronger in terms of uh, key issues, in terms of how, you know, the member states are going to address especially uh issues that are limiting uh young people uh accessing sexual reproductive uh, information and services i found that um, that is uh, weaker in terms of uh, the outcome document and uh, it's something that uh, we need to continue between now and then to really try and push because we know most of the countries have uh, uh are restricting access to SRH information, and that includes even CSE. And that means that if they are not, whereas it's highlighted that, uh, you know, there's issues around, um, uh, issues affecting completion of education, and uh, this teenage pregnancy being one of uh, the issues that is so obvious in most of the countries, we, you know, I find it from uh, my point of view that it needs to come out very strongly and we get commitments uh, from the member states that uh, issues around providing comprehensive sexuality education and access to services for really all young people becomes very crucial in terms of highlighting. But one of the things that also came out very clearly it's under peace and security where, you know, it's uh, very strong, the language is very strong around um, uh, ensuring good governance and uh, systems, addressing issues that lead to insecurity, and then youth are also really being mentioned in terms of uh, ensuring dialogue, because we know what that means in terms of uh, the population dynamics. So, um, in terms of uh, game change, I find that uh, under also peace and security, uh, that has come out very clearly. And uh, in the context of Africa, we know the growing population, the issues of unemployment, especially among the youth, becomes very key in terms of uh, addressing them in order to deal with the issues of uh, maybe, you know, migration or issues of high crime rate as a way of uh, survival. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, because of time, I think we'll move to the next question. Uh, over to you, my co-facilitator. Thank you so much, um, Rotini. We are bring, picking up that um, the African, you know, we're speaking to issues of SDGs. There is a need for strengthening of collaborations and um, stakeholder relations, um, but as well as you know, addressing or having stringent measures of saying how are states going to address for young people. But now, um, what would we say is, is the next steps for you? What would you say this is the next steps for you and your organizations and your networks in terms of follow up on the outcomes from the forum and continued engagement in SDG implementation and accountability processes? Where to from now? Uh, thank you so much, uh, the facilitator. My name is Abel Koka from Restless Development. Um, uh, our next step, we are looking forward to participate in the high-level political forum in July in New York. And uh, what we are going to do is to share the experience we have with Restless Development, some of the initiatives we have taken to use data to inform the government on the progress they have made so far in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. But also we are going to share the experience on how we can use young people to put them at the core of the achievement of the sustainable development goals because we believe that uh, if young people are not well involved if they are not given the seat at the table to be involved in uh, extraction of data but also in uh, implementation in review and follow-up 
it will be very difficult for us to meet the target we are we are giving each other as it has been said by other speakers that africa is one of the youngest continent in the world we have the, the majority of the african population is comprised by young people so we vote their power we vote their the ability to stand in the community to hold their decision makers accountable but also to participate in different initiatives which are contributing to the achievement of the sustainable development goals thank you thank you so much abel um is there anyone else to to be responding um on the next steps on what is it that you're going to be focusing on from now on yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emilari Ulizili. I work for Library in You. Uh, for me, my organization, we're looking more into how we can work on getting data uh, accessible uh, for, for people on uh, My name is Emilari And also, we're trying to see how we would work with libraries to get this data out to people because uh, the role of libraries in access, access to information is really important. For libraries in society, are, are much more close to the people. And now they can get access to this information. That's to be through public libraries and society. We're trying to decide we can work on on how we can have data data and data documentation across uh, the country and uh, to, to be able to be able to know where we have the country uh, in that regard. And also looking at the fact that we have just 11 years to go on the SDGs, and in Africa we have a lot of things to do uh, in terms of our policy, in terms of the need for us to integrate the SDGs into the national development plan, uh, so that we can so that we can have national ownership and also align in the country's specific priorities and um, the agenda 2030 and policy current between national line and ministries and finance. So a lot of things need to be done. For me as an organization, we're trying to work on projects that would uh, facilitate access to information towards achieving the SDGs through uh, emerging libraries in our societies. And we've commenced that already uh, with the great working on which has to do with um, which is library and past project cut across eight African countries and we're trying to work with library stakeholders and SDG uh, bodies in each country to facilitate access to information towards achieving the SDGs. And also look, understanding the fact that advocacy is a necessity and uh, we need to work on um, having uh, policies in place that would facilitate uh, access to data and information about the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you, Demilary. Um, I think we still have time to you know, delve a little bit more onto this question. Um, so I think our next um, speaker can take the question. Thank you. Uh, can I go? Yes, you may. Um, hello. Uh, okay. For me, uh, am I on? Damila? Yes, we can hear you. You can continue calling. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, um, for for me, uh, in terms of the next steps, uh, we are looking at um, uh, at uh, organizing um, a series of capacity uh, building and popularization of the both the Agenda 2063 and UN uh, 2030 Agenda, and through our network, which is the Africa Youth Commission, um, we will be doing this. Um, um, through our national consortiums uh, that are that we currently establish in African countries, and uh, not only capacity building and popularization, but uh, we'll be also working with a number of uh, youth other youth networks that are taking action uh, in the implementation of the SDGs to partner in terms of resource mobilization to support. Um, those um, networks or national consortium to um, take action in the implementation. Uh, we we also um, through our accountability um, and uh, processes, we will also be engaging in monitoring the implementation of SDGs through involvement in the national uh, review uh, reviews that are taking place at different member state level and countries that are not also opting. Um, for national reviews, uh, we will encourage them through our network um, to uh, go for national reviews. So those are the three next steps that Africa Youth Commission will be taking as part of our responsibility uh, in, in following up the recommendation from the Africa Regional Forums. Okay. Thank you very much, Kausu. Um, Hello. I, I think let me just bring in 
Uh, hello, can I come in? Question. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, yes, from our um, side, the next. To just bring in one question yeah. from one of our viewers. Hello? We can hear we can hear you. Yeah, I think um, can our next step, yeah, this is an our next step um has been that given the draft, uh we're trying uh because we are aware that there will be a review before it's uh finalized by the bureau. So um getting in touch with some of the bureau members in terms of seeing how can we strengthen some of uh, the language especially around uh, uh around sdg4 in, in line with the srh uh, so that is one of the things that are in terms of the next step that we we're doing the other is sharing the outcome uh, document in terms of the draft uh with the with the cso's and then countries um, uh, at the national level so that then we can support in terms of the dissemination of the outcome document in the lead up to the high level political forum, whether the country is reporting or not. And already some of the countries are scheduling national meetings with either the SDG forum or MPs in country. So we are supporting that so that then uh, we can have, uh, you know, maybe more stronger language or understanding by utilize that opportunity to also inform, uh, you know, uh, discussions from the mem uh, from the member states uh, in New York. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, it seems like the majority. So maybe perhaps we can, Mr. Emmanuel, you are. Um, you know, still with us to, if you want to just jump into this one, um, the advice on, the advice for young people on what is it that they can do to influence the national budgets to, to ensure that these budgets designate more funding to youth-led initiatives that are working to implement and check the goals. Hello? Hello? Hello, Please, yes. Can you, uh, can you repeat the question? Um, I didn't get the last part. Young people are asking for advice on what is it that they can do as young people to influence their national budgets, to ensure that these budgets designate more funding to youth-led initiatives that are working to implement and check the sustainable development goals. Right. So... If I got your question correctly, what can young people do to influence uh, policies at the national level to ensure that um, uh, their initiatives can feed into the national processes, right? I, I think the national budget. Uh, the national budget, right. Okay, fantastic. So I, I think certainly uh, financing is such an important uh, part of the SDG implementation because without funding, uh, we cannot uh, concretely take actions on the SDGs. And as we have already noticed that a lot of young people across Africa are taking initiatives, are taking actions within their own communities. But one of the, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, the most important thing that hold them back is the kind of resources that they need to be able to uh, implement their initiatives. And I think that it's important that we can, one, make a case for uh, financing youth development or financing youth initiatives on the SDGs. And in particular, also uh, sharing our impact, the work that we are doing in our various communities I certainly believe that we are making some impact and we are touching lives. How can we tell our story in such a way that it will be convincing enough for our uh, national leaders so that they can uh, consider financing youth development as a priority? And another thing that we can also do, and I believe uh, this webinar certainly is contributing to that, is to organize ourselves. Organize ourselves uh, at different levels, whether at the, at the community level, whether at the regional or at the global level, to make sure that uh, issues that affect us, priorities of young people, can be highlighted in national budget. Because if you miss out, uh, your priority is missing in the national budget. Certainly, you don't have any funding for your project. 
And one of the things that I've also noticed from my work in Ghana also is that um, really we don't see uh, national government committing resources to financing youth CSO, for instance. So you have a lot of youth CSOs who do a lot of fantastic work, but they don't get directly funding from the government. And that, I think, is a, a missing link that we must raise our voice to ensure that uh, through our national youth councils or the national youth authorities or the various countries, we government could make uh, an allocation that would directly go into financing youth development. I think if we do this, we will see a lot of youth actions uh, taking place within uh, the communities and within our various countries. Yeah. Uh, yes, on top of so that... Much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Thank you so can much, I, Emmanuel. Can I jump in? And to... to to our to our speakers, um, you know, in with the spirit of leaving no one behind, how are you working with more marginalized communities and youth to input in your work? And Sorry, can you focus just um, the on these processes to the implementation of the SDGs from your. your Unfortunately, there seem to be some breakages. Organizations and in the spirit of leaving no one behind, um, how are you working with marginalized groups, marginalized communities? Oh, Can you hear me now? Because I think Can you we are hear me some now? Breakage. Yes, I can hear you. Can I go first? The question that uh, my colleague is trying to ask is... Uh, you can go ahead, yeah. yeah. yeah yes, for, for, for restless development, we have, what we have been doing is... Focus on marginalization. Hello? Please go ahead. Yes, uh, for, for restless development, what we, are, we have been doing is uh, to make sure, for instance, in uh, one of the projects we are doing on... Uh, assessing the level of gender equality in the community. We have been mobilizing the group of uh, young women and, and uh, community, especially on fighting child marriage at large. We have been raising on where to report on how to access the gender de policy gender desk but also we have involved the young women and boys to collect data to inform the government on some of the challenges they are facing in the community. And we have done some of the dissemination events where we brought in some of the local leaders and the decision makers from the local district and our national level. And this had a, had a very huge impact because some of the policy gender desks have been established in the rural communities where there are no gender desk and more women are now aware of their rights and they are reporting some of the gbv cases and child marriage issues in the community but also we are using boys we are not leaving boys on board to make sure that they are fighting for it as well to protect their sisters their mothers and to make sure that they are reporting all cases that is what we are ensuring vulnerable groups are not left behind all right uh, i think we would have one more response to the question of marginalization and let me take it again so that we are all clear uh, the question is how are you working with more marginalized communities and youth to input to your work and focus on uh, these processes Kosu and damlari anyone Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Amilari. I work for Library Angel. I would love to share my experience on what we're doing currently on Library Impact projects across the African countries and how we're trying to work with marginalized youth in this region, specifically people with uh, disability. I realized that a lot of these people are left behind in terms of the SDGs, as they have no knowledge about the SDGs and what we're trying to do is to educate them about the SDGs. Uh, Providing access to information, basically, because when you are access to information, you know about what is going on in the society, and we're working with libraries in, in, those, in those communities, basically. So, uh, what, what we're working on in my, in my museum to that is to provide access to information uh, and also to provide capacity for those with uh, disabilities to educate them about the SDGs and how and how uh, uh, it affects their lives and the, and the need for them to be part of the process from the start, because they are part of us in society and they also need to be carried along in the process. Thank 
Let, let me go straight to the final question. Uh, are there recommendations you would make for how the sixth Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development could strengthen the meaningful participation of young people? Are there any good practices you've come across in other processes in, in, the, in the course of the work that you have done that you might want to share? Uh, do we have Anne Kosu or anyone who can respond to this question? Uh, yeah. Yes, I have a. I'm Abel Koka from Restless Development. The experience I want to share also some one of the recommendation is to make sure that uh, young people are not left behind because we have been observing the community that young people are treated as beneficiaries of the decision made by the politicians or leaders instead of being given a seat at the, the table to contribute to the process and to make sure that they're involved from the beginning to the end of the of the process. So what we have been doing in address development is to make sure that young people are capacitated and they are given information, the information they, they can use to hold the government accountable and also to take some different initiatives to, to toward the achievement of the of the SDGs. And the, what we have done, which is unique, we, had, we have developed what we call the power pack which is informing young people on how they can participate in VNRs and uh, what kind of outcome they can expect from their participation. And we will welcome the audience who are interested to send us an, an email. We can share the link where they can send to various young people to see how they can be involved in the VNR and how they can hold their government accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Abel. Let me hear from Wimji now. Hello, Hello. Can, can you get me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yes. My recommendation is similar to that of Abel. I think it's more of a participation for young people, trying to get young people not just be participants of the next um, forum, but have young people properly um, have their views heard, have their recommendations heard. Uh, thank you, Mwinji. Yeah. Uh, Castle, I see you're willing yes. to... Yes, you. Rotimi, uh, for me, uh, two things. Um, I would recommend the next session, uh, <coughs> the organizers look into possibilities of uh, remote participation, uh, uh, because uh, we have a number of uh, young people that are willing to, but due to um, uh, limited resources, they are not able to join. So uh, we could explore uh, the use of remote participation next time. Uh, but also in internet. addition to, yes, in addition to um, the main session, uh, we could also explore um, possibilities of different uh, sub-regional pre-forums uh, pre uh, where we can have ECOWAS, you know, a youth pre um, the um, sub-regional uh, youth pre-forums where young people can have their say part of the process. So those will be my two recommendations going forward. Thank you very much. And do you Thank have you. Um, yeah. Um, hello. I think for, uh, for me, a key recommendation is strengthening the meaningful youth, uh, you know, involvement and participation um, in the before and then during, because uh, it's still weak at the regional level and very uh limited so uh in the process so it means that we need to strengthen that so that you to come in that place are meaningfully engaged and not just like uh you know uh, uh being unable to really contribute meaningfully and uh, the space should be you know genuine because we have uh, less uh you know youth participating as compared maybe to other fora um the other thing in terms of also strengthening organizing the major group on uh, youth and children uh there is that space there but the space is weak in terms of uh, organizing before and bringing uh, youth together so one of the recommendations should be in terms of strengthening the major group on uh, you know youth and children so that the youth led organization and represent so that the youth have one voice because uh, what I saw is that there was uh, a bit of confusion 
and then uh you know youth were having different you know uh, voices and key messages and all that so it is very important that uh within that we also ensure that uh uh as youth there is one voice that is actually coming up and agreed upon on the issues yeah yeah uh, thank you very much um, I'm just love to... so now that the the african regional forum has happened let's spend some minutes looking ahead to the high level political forum and the opportunities that young people have to engage in this process with their government and their wider civil society i'm going to be calling on francis who is from the Youth Advocates Ghana, who's going to share with us some insights on how young people in this, in his country, are ensuring strengthened accountability towards the SDGs as part of Ghana's voluntary national review processes. Um, he will also be sharing with us his own experiences and giving us some tips and recommendations that he has for any young people who are watching and joining us who want to get more involved in the high-level political follow-up and review processes. Welcome, Francis, and over to you. Thank you, Rose, for the opportunity. Um, my name is Francis Ametepe from Youth Advocate Ghana, and I am a youth advocate. It's a, a delight to me to share with you how young people can look to engage and influence the high-level political forum process using Ghana as a case study. So in Ghana, two months ago, the National Development Planning Commission, which is known as the NDPC of Ghana, launched the national consultation to solicit input into the national report. This consultation was held at three different levels, with one focusing on young people and their participation. The consultation brought together young people, students, um, community groups, different stakeholders, to discuss and also garner their voices to inform the youth position. Actually, um, additionally, the CSU platform on SDGs in Ghana also have started or have, have, have started undertaking consultation to inform an alternative shadow report for which Youth Advocate Ghana sit on the technical committee and contributing to the entire process. As I speak to you currently, my colleague in, is in Kumasi, which is part of the technical committee to participate and represent uh, Youth Advocate Ghana. And it's also interesting to mention that Youth Advocate Ghana and International Organization for Migration, IOM, also conducted a social media campaign on irregular migration and how issues affecting young people can feature into Ghana's voluntary national review process. Um, the campaign provided a platform for young people between the ages of 15 to 35 years to share their views on migration among youth in Ghana. Uh, the campaign reached more than 100,000 social media followers with active engagement and participation from about 1,000 youth uh, across the country. Participants noted that youth unemployment uh, poverty and desire for higher education abroad are key factors that drive irregular migration among the youth. The outcome, mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. yes, the outcome of the campaign has been submitted to the National Development Planning Commission to actually feed I think into I gone to the bank. Hello, Francis. Yes. Yes, you may continue. Sorry for the interruption. Great. Thank you. So uh, in terms of recommendation, um, I will recommend to other young people that they should look for CSU platforms in their various countries that are working on sustainable development goals and find out how their countries are preparing towards the reporting uh, process at the uh, global level. Also, I will recommend to other young people that they should use the power of article writing and even social media to engage um, stakeholders around this to actually make a post and tag the relevant institution and demand or engage them on the voluntary national review process in their various countries. I believe this is a very good way to actually uh, put pressure on the relevant uh, institution to start preparation towards the 
reporting at the global level. Yes, so basically, I will ask if any other questions, I will respond to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francis. That was a very good and concise sharing experience on what is done at the country level in Ghana. I think at this point, I don't know if we can take a few more questions. We're running towards the end of uh, today's uh, conversation on the webinar. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's taking part today. Before we leave you, we would like to ask for uh, your feedback towards today's webinar. Um, just a second, please. Uh, yeah, before we go, we would uh, go straight now to... That, um, uh, on some of the recommendations that were shared by Francis, and before we end the, the webinar. Um, for those... As some information on the UN Major Group of Children and Youth, which can be one of, of the ways to support um, your engagement at the national um, and the global regions. Um, over to you, Keith. <laughs> Technology. Uh, we're having some te technical difficulties um, connecting to Kate Andrew, who is meant to speak on behalf of the major group on children and youth. Uh, while we wait to see if we could connect with it, we would see if we can take a, a few more questions uh, from uh, uh, from our participant. I, I think that we have Kate now uh, online. Kate, are you here? Kate, hello. Thank you very much, colleagues. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Kate. We can hear you. Uh, thank you very much. I was struggling to connect, but I'm glad I'm here now. Um, so I'll quickly introduce um, UNMGCY, the United Nations Media Group for Children and Youth, and uh, what we do and how more young people... Uh, yes, yes, technology. It's not too technical. Um, yeah, what UN... MGCY does and um, the processes and opportunities that um, it provides and how young people um, in Africa and across the globe are able to join um, these efforts. So quickly, uh, Keith, are you still with us? Yes, yes, I'm here. You can still, you may continue. Yes, yes. I am here. I got feedback while I was talking. So, so I didn't I didn't know whether somebody else was taking the floor. Uh, but it, hello, can you hear me? Um, it seems hear that me. we are having technical problems. It's connection.
Hello? Yes, Keith, you can continue. Okay, I'm only hearing myself now. No. Yes, yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, so quickly, I was just, you know, saying what are we and what we do, the UN MGCY is the um, UN General Assembly mandated official formal and self-organized space for children and youth. Um, I know youth varies from continents to continents, um, but in this case, under um, the UN definition, uh, youth here means under 30. So the idea is to contribute and engage in certain intergovernmental um, allied policy processes at the UN. Um, we act as a bridge between the young people and the UN system um, in order to ensure that um, their right meaningful participation and engagement is realized. So we do so by engaging formal and informal communities of young people, um, the design, implementation, monitoring, follow-up, and review of um, SDG policies at, at all levels. So all levels here, the idea is to have a multi-stakeholder process and platform um, feeding from bottom to top. So, you know, this will happen at national level, at sub-regional level, regional level, all the way to global levels. Um, so the UNMGCY goes all the way back to um, 1992, where it received its mandate um, from Agenda 2021, bilateral agreements in terms of reference um, with the UN entities so really what do we do we work um on various areas um on, on policy and advocacy to knowledge and youth actions and capacity building so those are the four critical areas uh, that we do on the policy and advocacy we advocate for um collective participation of young people in official formal avenues in policy design implementation monitoring, follow-up and review, capacity building, we facilitate activities for young people with aim to enhance understanding, knowledge and skills in relation to SDGs, uh, meaningful engagement and youth action. Uh, again, we provide the young people with a platform that encourage them to lead, join and showcase um, innovative uh, and effective actions addressing the needs of people in the planet. Again, knowledge uh, we are there providing young people the reference of this course creating an evidence based um through assessment of existing knowledge generating new knowledge um, identifying emerging issues and effective use of knowledge we work through working groups um so there are various working groups that um, our work happens and structure oh, so they're about time is really um, ten of them. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, thank you very much for your time. Um, in the interest of time, we need to stop here today. But if you still want to learn more and how to join the major group, you can see their website on the side that is going on the slide that is going to be put up. So yes, finally, um, I just want to give a big thank you to all of our speakers for their insights and for fighting the good fight for more youth engagement in SDG accountability processes. And a big thank you to all of our viewers tuning in this hour and also before we leave you we would like to ask for your feedback towards today's webinar and want to hear your ideas for the third webinar in the series we'll be planning for african youth powering the sustainable development goals also if you'd like to be a speaker we want to hear from you i uh, would share with you uh, in the comment section from rest of development we're posting right now a link to a short feedback form we would really love your comment it's also the form that you can use to indicate if you would like to speak in uh, subsequent editions of this webinar please feel free to fill this form it will take you about a minute to do so once again thanks to all our speakers thanks to all those who have joined us on today's webinar and we look forward to see you next time on behalf of myself roti Mulaade, and my co-facilitator and all the speakers and partners for this webinar would like to say thank you Youth power and see you next time.